Welcome to The Universe Talks. El Universo Habla. Only on Chicago For Real on Twitch. This program is created for the purpose of entertaining and enlightening our audience. Our host, Cristina, is clear on not creating sycophants into followers. She speaks only with permission of the universe, and it is the universe whom you should allow to guide you through the decisions you make in your day-to-day -day life. This program is in Spanish and English, and there will be some form of translation when one language is used over the other. Now, we welcome our host, Cristina, with today's declaration and meditation. Decreto de hoy. Me pongo en manos del universo cuando me siento perdida y no sé qué camino he de seguir y cuando el universo me responda voy a estar alerta para sentir su mensaje. Así es, así será, hecho está. Hola, Cristina. Buenas tardes, ¿cómo estamos? Eh? Buenas tardes, yay, bendiciones. Hi, everybody, welcome to the room, welcome to the room. This is the Universe Talks, El Universo Habla. We will be, as you know, saying things in Spanish and translating them in English. It's how we do here in this multilingual world of ours. Um, uh, if you are new, into the room, um, I would like you to introduce, I would like to introduce you to Cristina. Um, make yourself known, say hello, we want to know you, we want to greet you, we want to welcome you into the space uh, by uh, chatting in the comments. Um, if you are watching us on Facebook, consider joining us on twitch.tv slash Chicago for real. Um, and... Yeah, you can ask some questions. Um, you'll see on the bottom of the screen, a scroll is saying, uh, if you have any questions today that you are looking for some answers to, maybe you're thinking about changing your job, maybe you're thinking about someone you love, um, maybe you just don't know, um, you know, what to do with your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your friend. Um, you have questions. We have answers. She has answers. The universe has answers for you. Um, and I am simply uh, here to translate. So again, welcome to the room. Hola, Cristina. Hola, 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 hola. ¿Cómo están? Hola, hola, Coca-Cola. bien que hayan pasado un día maravilloso y que lo sigan pasando. She is wishing you a beautiful day and hoping that you um, continue to have a beautiful day through this program. Hi, welcome everybody, welcome, welcome. Um, we, we again, we will be answering questions today. If you have a burning question that you want answered about anything at all, um, just send your name and your birth date to the universe talks eight at gmail.com. At the other side of this, we erase uh, all the emails at the end of the show so we don't retain your information. If you want that anonymity, you can ask the, your questions to universe talks eight at gmail.com then uh, we will announce the question, but we will eliminate your name so that you can retain your anonymity. Um, if you are cool and want to just ask in the comments section, you can absolutely just pop your question right into the comments section and we will uh, happily uh, answer. So um, we're going to start with uh, a little message that the universe has for y'all today. And uh, Cristina is going to start. Again, don't be discouraged. If she starts in Spanish, you will be getting the message in English through me. Okay, let's get started. Okay, <laughs> okay vamos a hablar ahora, el, vamos a hablar en este día sobre um, las preguntas que muchas personas se han hecho. Y de hecho, una chica me comentó que si no podía yo hablar un poquito sobre 
La santería, algo que no es mucho mi tema, la santería, uh -huh. eh, yo respeto a todos los santos sabidos y por haber, eh, pero eh, para mí en lo personal, eh, eh, los que usan santería o los que hacen santería o el vudú, este, otro tipo de, de, este, de cosas religiosas, bueno, espirituales. So, eh, we're going to start today talking about um, a, a religious practice called santería. Uh, Santería is, um, it's a practice, it's a religion that's based in um, saints and calling on saints for things that you need and, and things that you're struggling with. And uh, what Cristina is saying that um, Santería and Voodoo um, are, are two religions that kind of, they kind of um, uh, exist in the same space of energy and energy bending. Um, And uh, I'm going to let her finish her thought here. Yeah. Okay. Yo, yo respeto todo esto, pero también lo que yo quiero es hacerle entender a la gente como esta persona me, me comentaba que porque ella cuando necesitó, porque fue con un señor y luego, luego le dijo que ella tenía el don para curar y que ahora ya era su padrino y que le empezó a decir que tenía que hacer tantas cosas. Y me dice, ¿y por qué? ¿Por qué para hacer esto? ¿Por qué tuvimos que matar un animal? Y yo le digo, eso yo también siempre me lo he preguntado. O sea. So part of uh, what Cristina is saying is that she has a lot of respect for the uh, practice of santería. Um, but she, what she would like to talk about is something that uh, a young woman came to her about. Um, and the young woman had involved herself in the practice of santería. She had gotten what I believe is a godfather in the religion they're called madrinos uh, it, what is it is it a godfather uh -huh. yeah madrinos yeah. but pa madrinas padrinos uh -huh. sí, 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 godfathers sí. godmothers in the religion uh that guide you through your religious experience um i'm doing my best to translate i actually don't know a lot about uh santeria so forgive me if i'm getting some of the terminology wrong but hopefully you can hang in there and the gist of it uh with what i'm translating but this uh young woman asked specifically why why did they have to do an animal sacrifice as part of the ritual and so christina is saying that she's often asked herself the same question okay yeah uh, para esto de la santería, yo siempre he dicho que las gentes, de la, los antepasados, mis respetos, ¿sí? Porque sabían lo que hacían. Ahora mucha gente se dice ser santeros o que son curanderos o que son, que son divinidades, ¿no? Pero en realidad, desafortunadamente, no son. ¿Por qué? Porque so, hacer esto se necesita un proceso de años no es de la noche a la mañana so it seems that there's like a lot of misinformation around the practice of santería and Cristina says that she has a ton of respect for ancestors and the practice of our ancestors um, that this is something that goes back hundreds of years the practice of uh, santería and um, unfortunately she says that there are just like anything there's you know people out there that say they know how to do this and um, are guiding other people through the practice of this, but don't really know what they're doing um, and aren't really guiding people properly. She says, uh, and I know I've heard this definitely to be true, that the process of um, becoming a santero and like being able to guide other people in their process takes years and years and years and years of work. Um, so, Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Más que nada, yo en este caso yo les digo o les he comentado que deben de tener mucho cuidado, porque eso es como eso es como entrar en otra puerta, en una puerta falsa, porque en realidad en sí no sabemos el proceso de cómo ellos están llevando o cómo están manifestando las cosas. Hay gente, por ejemplo, que eh, les dan ataques epilépticos. Hay gente que se vuelve loquita o que está mal de la cabeza. O sea, hay mucha gente, por ejemplo, en los psiquiátricos, que hay gente que dice que, se está, este, que están locas, pero en realidad no es que estén locas. Algunas es que tienen una misión, pero no saben cómo desarrollar esa misión, no saben cómo desarrollar lo que tienen o esas evidencias. 
So she's saying that um, oftentimes she's finding that people are getting involved with the process of this and being guided by people that maybe aren't, that are presenting themselves to be like a divine person um, or a divine spiritual leader. Um, but in reality, they, they really aren't taking care of people properly, um, consciously or unconsciously. And so um, she is, um, she's finding that sometimes people when in the practice of this, because they're not being guided properly through the practice of it, they're having epileptic seizures, they are, um, they're losing their minds, they're, you know, they're losing their touch with reality. And, um, and it's, it can get very scary, the process of it, if it's not guided correctly. Exacto. Entonces, uh, lo que yo le recomiendo mucho a la gente es que deben de tener mucho cuidado cuando se meten en, en ese tipo de, pues, de averiguación, ¿no? Yo digo, eh, experiencia o experimentar. Eh, hay que tener mucho cuidado. She says you have to be very careful when you are feeling explorative um, in that particular religion or down that particular path. You have to be really very, very careful and very, very cautious. Exactamente lo que el universo quiere es que no haya confusión que no haya confusiones con todo este tipo de cosas, que ahora mucha gente dice ser espiritual, mucha gente dice llamarse espiritual, o que, o que el damaste, que esto y que lo otro. Mucha gente hace este tipo de, de eventos porque saben que es más fácil. La gente a veces está frágil y necesita un consejo, necesita una ayuda. Entonces, ahí es donde empezamos a confundir o empiezan a confundir a la gente. So the, the message from the universe uh, comes forward as um, the universe wants you to not fall into confusion around your connection with, with the universe and with your um, journey on spir in spirituality. She says a lot of people will go into it head first. They'll throw themselves into it. They'll say namaste. They'll practice all this stuff. Um, but they don't really have clarity about their journey through it. Ya, yeah. hay que tener mucho cuidado en, en, en dónde nos metemos y también y cómo practicarlo o cómo hacerlo, ¿sí? Yo lo único que les pido de favor, de favor, que es lo que el universo me comentó o que me dijo es que, uh, que lo que no quiere es ya más sacrificios, tanto en seres humanos como en animales, porque desgraciadamente también hacen a veces, matan a gente por sacrificio o porque les concedan algo. So she says that the message that she's receiving from the universe is that the universe doesn't want this confusion any longer around the sacrifice of animals um, or the sacrifice of people um, that it wants us to, to stop this kind of practice. Entonces, ahorita lo que el universo quiere es que mejor estemos todos en unión, en unificación, en que no más daño, no más mal, ni tanto como envidia, ni como la avaricia, simple y sencillamente que lo encuentren a él, que, que lo busquen. Él nos habla, a veces el universo nos habla, nos responde a veces a lo que nosotros queremos, pero nosotros como que evadimos esa, esa intuición o evadimos esa respuesta. So the universe wants us to be just in communion with it, with the universe. It doesn't want the conduits, conduits anymore, connecting you to the person or to the thing or to the sacrifice. And then to the universe, the universe is open for you. It's always talking to you. And it's just a matter of you being present in it and more aware um, of that dynamic and the access that you have to it. Um, it does not want people in that kind of confusion any longer. Cristina, um, la, la, la religión de santería, o sea, esa parte de sacrificio es una parte muy grande y puede, puede haber gente que dice, tú estás hablando mal de la religión o tú estás diciendo que lo que hace esta religión es mala. ¿Qué es tu respuesta para eso? Ok, la respuesta para esto es que yo la... So, I just, I just ask, disculpa para que les digan, I just ask Cristina, um, like, you know, this is a, a spiritual practice, this is a religious practice for people, and there might be people out there hearing this and being like, hey, this is my religion, why are you, you know, um, bringing these th parts of my religion down? Like, what is the purpose behind your message? So, I just asked her that. 
Ok, A acá lo que quiero no es confundirlos ni tampoco hablar mal de su religión, yo respeto. Simple y sencillamente que estoy comentando que ahora la, digamos, que de unos 20 años para acá, mucha gente se dice ser santeros o espirituales o videntes, pero digamos, es para manipular a la gente. No es en realidad lo que son. Porque para ser santeros o para ser religiosos, o sea, tienes que ir a ciertos lugares a, a, que te, a que te enseñen. Y esto no es de un año, dos años. Esto es de años de proceso. Aún así, nunca, nunca, nunca vas a acabar de aprender esa religión. ¿Por qué? Porque son de otras maneras de cómo manifestar la religión de ellos, ¿sí? So she's saying that her her intention isn't to demean or degrade the religion and the practice of Santeria. Really what she's saying and what she wants you to focus on is the idea that there are a lot of people out there that um, can be manipulative and that can say that they are psychic or say that they are healers um, and make those kinds of claims because they are in practice of it or in the beginning of their journey of it, or maybe they've been in their journey firmly for some time, but they really haven't gone through that process correctly. And um, unfortunately, it starts to um, present this, this uh, uneven opportunity where they start kind of feeding off of your interest and your vulnerabilities and your fragility around your journey in this um in this practice and more so in the connection of between you and the universe. Um, I am true joy. I'm, I'm seeing your, you're saying you have to be careful um, that uh, fake people out there taking advantage of people who are really looking for guidance and help. And yeah, you really do uh, have to be careful. I have heard stories from friends who've had family um, inside of um, Santeria and people that they saw like madrinas and padrinos that they would see. And, um, And then as, you know, time passed and they got older, um, their, their relationship to it just got really chaotic, spiritually speaking. And so just like anything, you have to be very careful. Cristina says, this is a process, again, that takes years and years and years, and you never stop learning. There's no end to your learning of spirituality or the practice of Santeria specifically or voodoo or, 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 or anything. I mean, I'll throw Catholicism in there. There's just no end to the study of the religion. And so um, you, you definitely want to be wary of people that, you know, are early on in their practice. I see this with card readers too. Um, young, young people that start, you know, reading cards and then start reading people and really mess it up and get people really scared and uh, really vulnerable about the message they're receiving because they want to practice, but they're, they don't have their skills honed enough yet. And they leave people like really vulnerable with the messaging that they're giving them. So again, Cristina saying, ask those questions, make sure that whatever you're getting involved in is with someone that has had you know, 20 plus years of experience. And she has seen the rise as of 20 years ago to now, she has seen a rise in that kind of behavior within this line of uh, religious practice of spirituality and um, that people say they know and start teaching other people or start. And of course, all of this takes money and you know, everything takes money. There's money involved in all this stuff because it's not just like going to the, the target and buying a white candle. Like if you really want to do this right, you got to get the herbs proper. You have to get the candle virgin wax. You have all these sort of things and steps you have to take. And that involves a lot of money. And she doesn't want to see y'all in a, in a bad situation because you didn't ask enough questions and you just kind of went into it head first trusting. Exactly. Es, es como, por ejemplo, acá miren, si ven nosotros o vemos nosotros, todos los que quieren ser, este, por ejemplo, pentecostés, los cristianos, todas las religiones, ¿qué necesitan? Estudiar, ¿verdad? ¿Para qué? Para poder dar la palabra de Dios, para poder este, ser sacerdote. Así es el proceso de la santería. O sea, la santería viene de, de, de ancestros, 
de siglos atrás. Entonces, a, a esta chica me pregunta, pero es de que me dijo que yo ya estaba preparada para, para curar. Se fue a curar y ¿qué pasó? Pápalas. O sea, le fue mal a la pobre chica, ¿no? Entonces, ahí es donde yo le quiero decir a la gente, cuidado. Sí puedes a lo mejor ayudar, pero ¿qué pasa? Desgra desafortunadamente, tu energía la estás dando y estás recibiendo otra energía, pero no te enseñan, te enseñarán lo básico, que te protejas, pero eso no te va a servir para que te protejas en verdad. ¿Sí? So she's saying that um, this, this young woman that we were talking about earlier, um, the young woman was told that she was ready to heal other people. And Christina saying like, yeah, maybe she did achieve a place where she was able to actually put her hand on someone and start to heal them. But maybe, but she was not properly taught this young woman specifically was not properly taught to take care of her, how to properly take care of herself after that work. And so when you do that kind of work, there's this exchange of energy where, you know, you put your energy onto someone to heal them through something. And then you're receiving the muck of their energy that you're trying to clean up. And um, when this young lady went to go see Christina, it was because she was feeling really unwell. Mm -hmm. um, and when Christina went looking and seeing what was going on there, she found that she was ultra absorbing this uh, healing that she was doing for other people. And she wasn't getting rid of it properly. And it was really starting to um, hurt her, like, uh, Physically speaking, she was starting to um, have negative side effects from doing that kind of work. Exacto. Es como, por ejemplo, a mí, a mí cuando me, unas personas me conocieron, y, y algo curioso, o sea, todas llevaban con sus joyas, sus, sus, son videntes, entre comillas, videntes. Y cuando me ven, o sea, de verdad que ni siquiera me, me, me creo que ni siquiera se voltearon a verme. Cuando les empiezan a comentar, es de que, bueno, les presento a, a Cristina, y dice, Cristina, dice, ¿cuál Cristina? Y varias personas dicen, esta no tiene nada de evidente. Dice, ¿dónde están las joyas? ¿Dónde están sus protecciones? ¿A dónde está? O sea, todo el mundo me estaba buscando oro. Uh -huh. y, y digo, ¿pero por qué me busco? O sea, Dios nuestro Señor no anduvo con oro, ¿verdad? Dios nuestro Señor anduvo caminando humildemente. Entonces, ¿yo por qué voy a usar oro cuando yo sé cuál es mi protección? ¿Sí? No, no hay necesariamente decir, mírenme, véanme, tengo esto y por eso veo, por eso tengo ese don. No, es de que humildad antes que todo y yo sé cómo me protejo. So, uh, this is actually kind of cool, bochinche, but um, psychics and mediums <laughs> and healers, they get together. <laughs> they get together to learn from one another, to share e each other's skill set with one another. And um, Cristina was finding when she was like asked to join, it's kind of like a meetup for <laughs> mediums and psychics. Um, <laughs> But when she was asked to meet up with uh, some of these groups and she went, um, she found that um, she saw a lot of women with like a lot of jewelry and gold and like big, heavy, you know, just kind of like the, if you imagine, if you close your eyes and imagine like a psychic in your mind and what they might look like in a almost comical manner, it is very like all these jewels and these, you know, the, the, Uh, Stevie Nicks type, you know, wardrobe and things. And, um, and they didn't really pay any mind to her because Christina is very uh, humble in the way that she looks and dresses. She doesn't, she is kind of unassuming. Um, and so when she was introduced to the group, they didn't even know that she had any kind of skill set because I guess she wasn't in uniform. Um, so You know, just that she's sharing that story with you for you to know that that's the level where some of this stuff exists, mm -hmm. like with people that are less about the work of it and more about the look of it. And so they like to say, I can see, they like to say, I can, you know, um, read cards, I can see into your future. Uh, but it's more because they like the costume of it than necessarily the work that needs to be done to make sure that they are doing it properly and correctly and honestly and humbly. Ya, yeah. entonces lo, lo que el universo quiere es exactamente que todos estemos alertas, ¿sí? Que tengamos mucho cuidado, protegernos como pidiéndole al universo, hablando con el universo. Él, él nos, él nosotros a veces decimos, ay, pero es de que, ¿sabes qué? No tengo esto, tengo este problema, esta dificultad. Y resulta que el universo te está diciendo, hey, por acá te está dando una señal, te está dando otra señal, 
y nosotros como que queremos ver la señal que nosotros mejor nos, nos, nos plazca, ¿no? O lo que nosotros queremos ver, pero no es lo que nosotros queremos ver, sino es lo que el universo te está poniendo ahí enfrente. Yeah. So she's saying really, and that's really what the universe wants you to know, right? Instead of seeking these things externally all the time, like looking for your answers in the tarot reader that you found on Instagram or the, the psychic that you got through Facebook, even though we're on Facebook right now, but ya tu sabe. Um, instead of looking externally all the time for your answers, look and connect with the universe around you because the universe is providing you the answers. They just might not be what you want to hear. It might be that you are kind of in denial about the messaging that you're receiving. Um, and so she really encourages you to try and meditate and be in communion better with the universe on your own without the need for people in between to, um, to always answer the questions for you. And that, that is a way that you can protect yourself a little bit more while you're going through the process of trying to figure stuff out. Meditation is a really nice way to kind of find answers, you know, listen, listen for meditate on your question and listen for the answer that the universe might be giving you. It might also not be the one you want. It's kind of like plucking the flower. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. He loves me not. You get to the last petal. It's he loves me not. So you count the stem and you say, he loves me. You know, no, <laughs> no, um, <it's> <laughs> that's not, it doesn't work that way. You can't just, uh, you can't just want to hear what you want to hear. You have to be open for the answer. And the answer can sometimes be contrary to what you want, but it's important that you listen and that you ask for yourself first. Es como, por ejemplo, cuando tenemos trabajo, este, uh, tenemos mucha prisa por llegar a algún lado, ¿no? Y vamos a agarrar un carro y no pasa el carro y no pasa un carro y no pasa un carro. Bueno, pues, ¿qué pasa? Si ha pasado un tanto y ahorita no pasa ningún carro. Y, y te, te dice el universo, espérate, no te aceleres. Va a llegar un carro en el momento justo que tú lo necesites, pero por algo no tienes que llegar a ese lugar a tiempo. O, o sea, el universo nos pone, eh, el universo conspira a nuestro favor. El problema es que nosotros no sabemos cómo escuchar al universo. She says that the, the universe is always conspiring in our favor, even if it feels like it's conspiring against our favor. But it is always conspiring in your favor. It's just a matter of how you pay attention to it and how you allow yourself to receive it. She gives this example of uh, waiting for, you're waiting for a car, you're waiting for a taxi, right? And uh, when you first get to it, you, when you first get to the corner of the street, there's like a lot of taxis that are kind of passing by. And then you go to get one and then there's none and there's no taxis and you have somewhere to go. And you're like, oh, why is the universe working against me? I need this taxi. I have to arrive at this place right now. And it's just working against me. But it turns out that maybe you shouldn't be at this place on time. Maybe you shouldn't arrive at this place at that right time. Maybe the right time to arrive is when you get that taxi, finally, when that taxi actually comes for you. And it might make you five minutes late. It might make you 10 minutes late. But it is making you late for a reason. And so it is our job to be open to the fact that there's nothing to do. You're not going to sprout wings and fly to your event, right? <laughs> you are going to have to wait for the taxi. Now you can choose to wait and be pissed. You can choose to wait and be frustrated, or you can say, okay, universe, I need a taxi. You're going to send me the taxi when I need that taxi. I'm going to stand right here and wait for you to send me that taxi. And if you intend for me to be 10 minutes late to this event or half an hour late to this event, then so be it. And maybe you can help the people there not be upset with me for being late. Yeah. And that's how you hand it over. You hand it over to the universe. Así es. Hay que saber entender al universo. So you have to understand how to understand the universe. Hay que abrirse a todo lo que, lo que él nos mande, pero hay que aprender con amor. You no. have to open yourself up to the universe and you have to um, learn to be open to the universe with love in your good lessons and in your bad lessons. Así es. And that's it.
That's the message, y'all. Yeah. Um, we have some questions that are coming in. It's 6.35. We're going to roll into the questions. Um, again, I will not read uh, the names if you've sent them through um, Gmail, uh, but I will read your questions so you know that it is um, you that we are talking to. And um, I, I would like to also invite you guys to... Um, ask your questions in the comments section here. If you're okay with having that be out here, then we're okay with it too. You don't have to send your stuff uh, to the Gmail account. It's just an option for you. So um, let me change this little banner. And while I do that, we're going to um, remind you guys why it would be a really, really, really great thing for you to follow us on Twitch, follow Chicago for real on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Chicago for real. And uh, we love being on Facebook and getting you guys in the room, but we love it even more when you join us in the room on Twitch. And let me show you why. We'll be right back. So it is time to ask your questions to Christina. We're going to start with the first question. Uh, the first question reads, what do you see with regards to my work slash career? Has there been anyone who has prevented me from a promotion? Okay. Is acá, ¿Qué ves con respecto a mi trabajo y carrera? Y que eh, uh, si ha habido alguien que me haya impedido un ascenso. Uh -huh. Ok, con respecto a su carrera y su trabajo, um, digamos, en el trabajo. En el trabajo vienen muchas cosas que va um, a estar como que todavía un poquito en el nivel. Por digamos que serán unos cinco o seis meses, va a estar en el mismo lugar. Uh -huh. Sobre su carrera vienen muchos a uh, muchas cosas. Okay. Wait, don't say them just yet. So, so the first part of your question is um, in regards to your work that what what you're dealing with in your work right now, um, it's going to keep rolling like that for like the next six months. So I'm not sure what you're dealing with, but whatever you're in the middle of and dealing with, it's going to continue to be that kind of vibe for another six months. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sobre su carrera vienen proyectos muy buenos, muy agradables, pero uh, todo como que se va a ir formando como tiene que, es, ahorita es su, su trabajo y su carrera es como un rompecabezas. Tiene que ir armándolo poco a poco, con cuidado, con precaución, para cuando ya esté todo completamente, entonces sí, que se olvide de todo porque ahí es donde va a haber la luz en el final del túnel que ella tanto desea. So, um, right now, Christina says that you are feeling like there's uh, some separation between the work that you're doing and the career that you want. So, it's kind of like a puzzle. It's not quite clear to you yet what, like, what is uh, what is it that you really want to do or how you really want to do it? And so she says that you have to be very mindful and very cautious as you put the pieces together, figuring out what it is that you want to do. Um, and then one day as you do that work, like, you know, manifesting, thinking, one, uh, really putting it together, what you want to see for yourself, one day it's going to be like a light that just turns on and you're going to know exactly what you need to do and you're going to take action in doing it. Um, ¿La carrera es diferente del trabajo que ella está haciendo en el momento? Mm -hmm. Ahí se ve como que es más o menos similar, como que ahí se llevan las dos. So I guess the whatever your career is, is really closely related to what your work is right now. Entonces, ¿qué, qué tiene que buscar 
no tiene que buscar. No. Todo el universo va a conspirar a su favor de ella. Es simplemente que ella tiene que tener seguridad en ella misma, lo que quiere, lo que busca, y si está contenta ella misma con su trabajo, todo va a florecer. Pero si está con esa, a veces que, ay, sí, adoro mi trabajo, pero a veces como que hay que flojera, como que si no siente su trabajo oh. con amor, ¿cómo quiere que crezca su trabajo si no lo hace con amor y no lo hace con pasión? Ah, uh, this is what I wanted for you. Okay. Um, friend, here is the message for you. I guess this is the dynamic that you're experiencing right now, and it's why you're kind of stuck in the muck of your work. Um, you say to yourself, oh, I, I, love my, I love my work. I love my career. But when it comes to actually doing it, you get really lazy. You're like, I don't want to go today. I don't want to do the thing today. And so Christina is offering you like, how can you grow the career? How can you grow the work if you are feeling so unhappy and so lazy about it and so wishy-washy about it uh, in the same breath? So you have to uh, put some time and, and thinking work into what it is that you really want to see yourself doing within this work and find your joy and love for it again, because that's, what's going to open the doors for you. She says that the universe is conspiring for you. It wants to open these doors for you. It wants to give you the things that you really want, but it can't do it for you. If you're going to be in the middle and like, you know, kind of, I love it, but I don't love it. And I want to do it, but I don't feel like it today. You have to change that part of yourself and get more passionate about what it is that you're doing. Exacto. Ok. ¿Y de ah, la promoción? Eh, acá de, acá dice, no dice promoción. Oh. Dice acá que si ha habido alguien que le haya impedido una, un ascenso. Ajá. Pues, acá miren, ah, que lo haya impedido, no creo. Uh -huh. eh, simple y sencillamente ella tiene que desear con el corazón ese ascenso. Uh -huh. Porque si nosotros queremos un ascenso nada más porque hoy, para que vean todos que ya soy alguien importante, no. O sea, todo lo que uno quiera en la vida tiene que ser por amor y pedirlo con amor. Uh -huh. Sí, porque uno, uno quiere el, el ascenso porque, porque me siento capaz, porque lo voy, yo soy, yo soy una persona capacitada y soy capaz de, de salir a flote sin necesidad de que nadie me tumbe. ¿Por qué? Porque esto es lo que yo quiero. Ella tiene que estar bien segura cuál es su meta. Ok, si no so. Segura, no puede llegar porque no está segura. So, friend, what she's saying to you is that um, you have to be really careful about what. So, nobody's stopping you from getting this promotion, by the way. Um, there's no one's preventing you from getting it. What it is, is that it's, it's energetic and it's clarity for you. Um, because it seems like sometimes you want this promotion, um, because you want to be seen by your coworkers. You want to be acknowledged that being good at what you do. And you want to kind of sit above them with like, look, I got the promotion. I won the thing. I I'm doing great. People see me, people see my work. And that's like more rooted in ego. And you got to be really, really careful about feeding the ego because the ego doesn't represent us well. And so what, what she's inviting you to do is to humble yourself and to really ask yourself, why do you want this promotion? And say, it's because I'm good at my job, because I love what I do, because um, this gives me passion and drive. And, um, and want it for those reasons, want it for the reason of being excellent within your role uh, and not to be seen by your coworkers, to be admired, to be elevated. That is all ego stuff. And what you need to do is really get down to the fact that I love what I do. I'm passionate about my work and I deserve this promotion because I'm good at this and I, and I work hard at it and that's, and really stay in that space about it as much as possible. So if you find yourself floating into that space of ego where you're like, ah, oh, they don't see me or, ah, oh, it doesn't work for me. Like to interrupt your thought, access your gratitude, which is something that we talked about last Sunday. Gratitude is the easiest way to interrupt ego from feeding. It, we, we put gratitude on the plate of ego and ego's like, I don't want it. 
So Mm -hmm. find the gratitude and say, thank you that I have this job. Thank you that I have this opportunity to be excellent. And, um, and thank you for continuing to give me the opportunity to like grow my passion within the work. And then you'll get further and further away from the ego that might be driving you right now. Ella sí empieza a decir, a decretar o a decir, a darle gracias al universo por su trabajo. Gracias porque quiere su trabajo, porque ama su trabajo. Y gracias por la seguridad de que tiene, gracias a Dios, un trabajo. Ella entre más agradezca por su trabajo, ella va a amar más su trabajo y se van a abrir más puertas de las que ella ni se imaginaba que se, iba, que se van a abrir. She says that if you do practice more gratitude and say, universe, thank you for this job. Thank you for providing me work right now when so many people don't have it. Thank you for giving me this job that puts food on my table and a house over my head, a roof over my head and come from gratitude as often as possible with the universe around this job. You're going to see that your mindset will shift and set in the place that it needs to be in order for these doors to open. And they will open once you do this work and it will just be abundance flowing to you. Es muy importante pedir y agradecer. It's really important to ask and to be grateful. Ask and have gratitude for what you have, not for what you want. Not thank you for hearing me out and maybe sending it my way, but <laughs> thank you for giving me the job. Thank you for letting me be in the room. Um, you know, expressing gratitude over the right the right things. Okay. Um, okay. I hope you receive that well. Um, we have our second question. Um, second question. Why are timelines when getting a reading usually wrong or off when told when something should happen? Will it still happen in the future? Is it the path that we choose? Is it the mindset? I know for me, I take it literally and feel like, I make it not happen. Okay, so this is this is interesting. I'm going to kind of like reword this a little bit because I think I know what you're saying. What you're saying is um, you're getting readings and when you get readings, you're receiving like in the next three months, in the next six months, in the next two weeks to six months. And then um, it's not happening. They're not, these things aren't opening up the way that you're being told that they should. And so you're asking what's up with that. <laughs> and you're also asking, um, does that still mean that it's going to happen just maybe further down the line? Um, is it just a matter of like whatever action you're putting into place in order to make something happen? Uh, is it your mind and your thoughts that are closing these things that, um, that were supposed to be for you. And now your thinking has kind of derailed the thing. Um, so that's the question for this person. Okay. Dice, ¿por qué las líneas del tiempo se obtienen una lectura? ¿Suelen ser incorrectas o incorrectas? ¿O correctas o incorrectas? Cuando se les dice, cuando se les dice, ¿cuándo debería suceder algo? Ok, las líneas del tiempo, cuando se obtiene una lectura, una de dos, o la persona que le lee las, las líneas no sabe cómo, cómo descifrarlas uh-huh. o cómo, cómo decirle a la gente, y por eso es que a veces suel, no suelen salir como, como uno piensa o como uno cree. Ahí es a donde vamos, ¿no? En de que a veces muchos creemos o pensamos que sabemos y en realidad no sabemos y hacemos creer a otras personas. Es lo que yo no quiero caer en eso, en ilusionar a las personas o decir algo incorrecto que no es. ¿sí? So she's saying it could be one of two things. So she just shared one. Uh, the first is that it could be the person that you're getting your reading from um, maybe doesn't know really well how to read the the cards or read the timelines that are given in the cards. Um, Maybe because of lack of experience from that person Um, or yeah, that's right. Just the inexperience of the person giving you off timelines would be one. Y la segunda. Okay. Dice seguirá ocurriendo en el futuro. No, no, tú dices que puede ser una de dos cosas. ¿Qué es la, la dos? Ok, la dos es que 
en este caso sus líneas ha de ser que están bloqueadas y ella quiere más escuchar lo que ella quiere, ella quiere escuchar o quiere ver más que nada lo que ella quiere y no lo que están diciendo las líneas. Um, and so the second thing that it could be is that the lines are getting blocked because you want to hear a certain thing. And so you're not really listening correctly when, um, when the person is giving you the timelines. Y se está aferrando algo que no es. And so you're receiving something that isn't really what it, it's supposed okay. to be. Se está aferrando a una respuesta que no es, no es la que ella quiere que agarre. Se está aferrando a una respuesta que no es la respuesta que ella quiere. So you're like almost creating an answer just, just from that want and that energetic want of hearing what you want to hear is creating um, you receiving an answer that is incorrect. Acá es como me dice, seguirá ocurriendo en el futuro o es la mentalidad. Es curioso lo que pregunta, porque a veces nuestra mentalidad está más a lo que nosotros queremos, a lo que nosotros sentimos, a lo que nosotros queremos que ocurra, que pase y que suceda. ¿Y qué sucede? Y yo, por ejemplo, cuando veo a la gente, les digo, miren, con el dolor de mi corazón, no quiero decir esto, pero ojalá y Dios quiera y no pase, esa es mi manera, o yo me equivoque. Y lo que yo estoy diciendo no sea verdad, pero desafortunadamente sale. Y a veces es lo que la gente no quiere escuchar. Lo que la gente no quiere escuchar es a veces lo que más sale. ¿Sí? Entonces, acá lo que ella tiene no es su mental. Habla a ver probabilidad que sea una parte su mente, uh -huh. pero también ella tiene que trabajar mucho con, con ella misma para que no pueda ocurrir en el futuro. Okay, so she's saying that, she's saying that um, in regards to your question around, is it your mind that's closing stuff um, or will it still happen in the future? Um, the answer to that is that things could still happen in the future but your mind might be stopping those things from happening just ar around how you are cultivating your thoughts and how that is cultivating your actions. Um, just because something, it, the opportunity of something exists for you, doesn't mean that it's going to just manifest if you don't do the things that you need to do to open those doors. Um, and you have, and she says for you specifically, friend, you have work to do on um on getting your thoughts and mind straight around the things that you want because sometimes you want what you want and that's that's what you want to see happen but you're not doing the mental energetic positive gratitude work that you need to do in order to receive those things I want to give you, I want to share an example of my own experience. Um, and, and I hope that it speaks to you, but, um, early on I, I received, um, messaging for Christina that, she, you know, she saw me working on television and it was at a time where that was so totally unrealistic. Like I just couldn't even, I had been in the career for so long that I couldn't see it happening for me. And if I would have continued to think like that, And I, if I would have been like, oh, she says I'm going to be on TV, but I'm, I don't see it. You know, every time I go into an audition, it sucks. Every time that I do this, it's the worst, you know, I'm so frustrated. And if I stayed in that space, frustrada. Um, frustrated and angry and upset about it, then I'm not going to be in the right kind of space to walk into a room and own it and get the role. Right. So that's where my thoughts Uh, even even sometimes your own fear of success, which was part of my problem too. Like I had such a fear of success that I would sabotage things to to not be disappointed that I wouldn't get them. You know, we don't we really we really um, tie ourselves up in a knot sometimes with our thinking, and so we have to be really intentional about where we put our thoughts in regards to where we want where we have our wants and how we're going to ma manifest those things. And so one thing that really, really worked for me to like 
walk the walk without needing the doors to open in any particular way or another, but trusting that they would because it was in my it was in my destiny for these things to be that way is something that Christina taught me. And it said, and it goes, um, if it's mine, it's already mine. And if it's not meant for me, then it's not mine. Um, and so whenever I started going into audition rooms, I would say I would work really hard and I would prepare really well. And I would get, um, you know, I would put my makeup together nice and put my clothes together nice. Mm -hmm. um, but when I walked into the room, I did my work as as well as I could, given the time that I had. Uh, but I put all my heart in it because and stopped being so like, oh, I hate auditions or oh, I hate doing this. And I started to be more positive about having an audience for five minutes in the day where mm -hmm. I normally wouldn't, you know, and having the room for a moment and being able to like own that space and being so happy to be there. And then when I walked out of the room, I would say, if it's mine, it's already mine. And I don't have to worry about it. If the universe didn't mean, doesn't mean for me to have this, then it won't give it to me. And I just kept walking my path. And, um, you know, two years from that date of like making that mental shift for myself, where I was like, I'm going to focus on my career and I might have to struggle a little bit and not have like all the nice things that I want all the time because the money's going to be a little tight. I'm going to throw myself into this with faith and I'm going to give myself two years of really putting it out there and trying and uh, walk into the rooms with all the positivity that I can. And then uh, at the end of those two years, if it's not that, then I'll find something else to do that brings me joy. But I went into it with faith and with a lot of love. And, um, and at the, at, almost the end of those two years, I was halfway into, it was like August that I was um, offered a role on television and I was completely blown away and so grateful for, for the, the journey of that, that thinking and that process. So I share that with you only to, to show you that there are ways that we sabotage ourselves without even meaning to while, while we let our, our monkey mind kind of take over our thoughts and wreak havoc with them. We have to really pay attention and be mindful about where our thinking is around certain things. Okay. Dice, y eh, sé que para mí lo tomo literalmente y siento que hago que no suceda. Hay que quitarse ese bloqueo. Hay que quitarse ese bloqueo y vienen muchas cosas. Y sí les, les a todo les digo, a, a veces eh, lo que no quiero es que se enfoquen tanto a veces en este tipo de cosas, en las líneas, que las cartas, que acá, que no. Dejen un poquito que el universo haga su trabajo. Ustedes nada más déjense llevar. Enfóquense, pídanle a él, hagan su oración. Dice, dice el universo, bueno, sea Dios, ¿no? En su palabra, con que me dediquen cinco minutos de su tiempo es más que suficiente y que me agradezcan para que ustedes puedan recibir la divinidad que ustedes quieren. O sea, lo que ustedes pidan no, se los va a dar, pero es cuestión de tener fe con uno mismo para poder tener fe en lo demás. So um, she says in regards to the part of your question, friend, where you say, um, I know for me, I take it literally and feel like I make it not happen. She really wants you to work on that part of your thinking process um, because sometimes we get she really doesn't want you or anyone to get bogged down to timelines that come up on the cards. Right. These are this is the reading that you get. This is the possibility that you have the destiny possibility that you have in your cards. And this is how we mess ourselves up. We mess ourselves up by being like, oh, it didn't happen in the literal three months that they said it was going to happen. And now it's not going to happen. And again, you can see how you just mm -hmm. automatically start getting in that negative space uh, and the negative thinking. And in, in the, the um, Christina calls it in the, uh, in the lacking you you're like in the lacking of things and so when you are in the need and in the want of stuff then you continue to kind of cultivate that reality around you so you have work to do in regards to how literally you take things and then become disappointed when they don't literally happen the way that you receive them uh, what she's inviting you to do in order to work on that is to be in communion with the universe at least five minutes a day. Take five minutes to close your eyes 
and find your gratitude. Think about the things. I mean, I'm talking universe. I woke up today and I breathed. That means I'm alive and I have opportunity to make my dreams happen. Universe, my body works. Everything in my body works today. I can grab the cup. I can walk. Um, this is a, this is, I'm grateful for that. Thank you for the health of my body universe. Um, today I had uh, an opportunity to do something different at work and that was kind of fun. And I'm not used to having that kind of fun at work. Thank you for that. Find your gratitude with the universe for five minutes every single day. And slowly you will start changing the way that you think and the way that you associate stuff around this. Now you can choose to be stubborn and be like, it doesn't work <laughs> after you're done. <laughs> and that is your choice to continue to be in the negative about the work that you need to do in order to be where you want to be. But the only person holding you back is yourself. So get out of your own way. Okay. Por ejemplo, acá me dice ella que, por ejemplo, si mi, uh, pregunté que si su marca sería famosa y me dijeron que sí, en el 2021. Ok, um, ¿Qué? acá la, la misma pregunta de esta chica, uh -huh. Orni, dice la siguiente pregunta, es, bueno, es una como una cuestión, dice, por ejemplo, pregunté si mi marca sería famosa y me dijeron que sí, mm -hmm. en enero 2021. Mm -hmm. Ok, acá la cuestión es que eh, um, ella tiene que trabajar, volvemos a lo mismo, ella tiene, lo que le dijiste, lo que le explicaste está perfecto, uh -huh. ella tiene que trabajar más en ella misma y no ponerlo como que, oh, tú me dijiste que vas a llegar a ser tal día, pues ahora tal día lo quiero, uh -huh. pero ella ha hecho para que sea ese día. Ok, so um, what she's saying here is, you asked some question, uh, this is still the same question, the same person asking, this is still your reading. Um, you had asked someone, or I guess in a reading that you had about um, your brand, if, if and that, that person reading you said that your brand was going to be famous in 2021, and that you got uh, really tied into that timeline. Um, Cristina, repítame, uh, ¿Qué tiene que hacer con esos pensamientos de, de recibir ese, ese día exacto? Eh, porque acá en este caso ella no trabajó. Simplemente oh. ella dice, ah, no, pues tal día me va a llegar y tal día. Pero ella, ¿qué hizo para ganarse ese premio en, el, en, enero, en enero, digamos, su marca? Yeah. Ella no hizo nada, simplemente lo dejó en las manos y confió. Pero dice uh -huh. Dios, ayúdate que yo te ayudaré. O sea, ella tenía que oh. trabajar so when you receive that messaging about your brand being famous in 2021, there was a ton of work that you would have had to have done in order to make that possible. But you didn't do that work. What you did instead is say, oh, this is in my destiny. Come January 2021, um, my brand's going to be famous. And you kind of went up. Oh, I leave it to the universe to open those doors for me. But God, the universe says, help yourself and I'll help you. In order for me to help you, you have to help yourself. And um, and so that is that's the that's the step that you're missing there is understanding that in order to be as big as you want to be, mm -hmm. it's gonna require you, it's gonna require for you to work differently, to dream bigger, to get more, you know, inventive about um, you know, building your brand and um and really do the work. In that way, it's doing the work. For me, in regards to my to my acting stuff, when I asked Christina, she was like, you know what you need to do? You need to be a better actor. And I was like, ooh, <laughs> I thought I was pretty damn good. Okay. And she's like, you have to, you know, be more connected to the to the lines that you're reading. You have to learn how to cry. You have to learn how to pull from that emotion. Um, you have to to have different ways that you approach the lines and the work. And I was like, oh my God, like it's enough that I got to go to these damn auditions and do my makeup and do my hair. Now I got to work harder. I thought I was ready. Um, <laughs> but that's my ego talking, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I have to do that work. And so it was hours upon hours in my house, in front of my computer, watching how my face moves, 
sitting and emotionally cutting myself so that I can access these emotions and I know how to do it, teaching other people so that I can learn by watching them mm -hmm. and figuring out what works for them and what doesn't work for them. And all of these things, I did it with drive, with purpose and with heart. And slowly I started to make myself a stronger actress. Is there room to grow? Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. I got so much room to grow. There's so much work to do, but I do that work with faith with ambition and with hustle, always looking for a new way to work, to grow the thing, to grow myself. La visualización eh, ayuda bastante. The visualization, like sitting and doing that visualization of like, all right, how can I grow the thing? How can I take it to the next level? What do I have to, what pieces do I have to move on the board so that I can get the next thing? That's the work. And you, you got to do more work in that direction, friend. Okay. Next. Okay. Uh, I hope you receive that well. Hope you receive that well, friend. Uh, we're going to move on to the next question. Having a difficult time getting physically healthy, trying to lose weight after years of tragic events and gaining year after year. I'm slowly learning I need to fix this because I can't flourish creatively without doing so. Is... Uh, um producer is this a continued question yes. yes okay 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 uh so there's more um i love so many creative things art theater broadcasting entrepreneurship etc but find the backlash i've gotten about my weight paralyzing that i don't try oh i'm so sorry i downplay my skills and get so upset with myself when i see others more overweight actually thriving in this area hmm i believe i have charisma but won't lie i'm in my late 30s and i feel the older i get i should just hang up believing i'll ever do anything creative and be successful how can i heal this I know this is a loaded question, but feeling a vibe from you guys right now. Right on, friend. Right on. <laughs> ok. Este, estoy teniendo dificultades para estar físicamente saludable, tratando de perder peso después de años de eventos trágicos y aumentando peso año tras año, poco a poco. Estoy aprendiendo que necesito solucionar este problema porque no puedo prosperar creativamente sin hacerlo. Bueno, primero. Quítate esa, men, quítate esa mente de que quiero adelgazar, quiero adelgazar, porque entre más lo desees, estás frustrada y no vas a adelgazar. ¿Sí? Ok, so first things first, friend, you gotta get rid of that thinking around your weight and all this worry around your weight, because if you keep bogging yourself down in the guilt about your weight, you're never gonna lose that weight. El, entre más desees adelgazar, no vas a adelgazar, vas a engordar, vas a estar como yo. <laughs> no, she says the more you obsess about losing weight, the more weight you're going to gain. No, 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 no. Eh, mira, ama tu cuerpo, quiere tu cuerpo, adora tu cuerpo. Di, ay, mi cuerpo es maravilloso. Mira, haz así. No. Ay, estoy bonita, estoy bella. Mi cuerpo es fantástico. You have to, you have to love your body. You got to love your body, baby. You got to no, love no. that body. Kiss your body. Hug your body, say, my body's beautiful, my body's so great, my body works for me. You got to love yourself. Yo, yo tengo un cuerpo espectacular. ¿Sabes? You have to say, I have a spectacular body, yeah. a beautiful body. You know why? Tu, sobre, tu sobrepeso que tú dices que estás teniendo es porque estás emocionalmente tú solita echándote aire, como poniéndote aire, 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 o sea, pura energía negativa de que quiero adelgazar, no puedo, no puedo, no puedo, sí vas a poder, ve comiendo de poquito en poquito, eh, eh, yo veo que casi no comes porque quieres perder peso, no, está mal, debes de comer con calidad, calidad, no cantidad. Ok, ok, so, so she says that, hey Nino, what's up? Welcome to the room. Um, so she says that um, when you when you think to yourself these negative thoughts about your weight and when you obsess about losing weight, that what you're basically doing is creating this energy in your body that just keeps you stuck in the skin that you're in. She sees that you're not even really eating much. 
right? You're in this place now that you're just like trying, like you have times where you eat very little because you're so worried about gaining weight and you're trying to um, lose weight. And so you eat less and less and less. And that's really unhealthy, right? And so um, what she's saying is you have to eat better quality of food. Mm -hmm. You have to change that relationship and sit and eat. And when you eat, eat slowly, but eat well and eat a, a good quality of food. So this is not her telling you put salad with grilled chicken on your plate and tomato and like two tomatoes and be happy with your life. No, she's saying find those foods that are good for you, that are healthy for you, the sweet potatoes, the rices, the beans, the, and figure out how to eat this food correctly so that you can start nourishing your body. When you nourish your body, you nourish your brain. When you nourish your brain, your brain can function properly and see the right things and not get so obsessed in the negative. How are you going to feel good if you ain't feeding your body well? How are you going to feel good? Right? I offer you this too. I am not a spokesperson for Noom, <laughs> but I did sign up for Noom. And what I found, what's so cool about Noom is that it teaches you the foods that you eat that are, they break it up into three color categories, green, yellow, and red. And I thought that I was eating healthy stuff. And I'm like, why am I gaining so much weight? I'm eating healthy. Um, but it was really almost all in the yellows. And, and then I had some stuff in the reds. And so what I learned to do after years, babe, years of mm -hmm. deprivation things, Okay, so I feel you on that. After years of like, I'm not going to eat. I'm not going to eat. And then you like come in night, you're like, gong, 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 gong. <laughs> you're so damn hungry and you eat all the food. After years of yo-yo dieting and all this unhealthy behavior, I just like decided to stop obsessing mm -hmm. and just learn to eat well for my body and then focus on getting stronger, not losing weight, but getting stronger physically. So how can I do that? Well, I'm going to learn what foods, where I land on my foods. And it became kind of like a game trying to get more green in the green, you know? And what I found is that when I focused in that way with that app, um, I still was eating really delicious stuff that I totally loved. And it was in the green, like good food, like granola and cantaloupe and, you know, stuff that I would have never thought to eat. And, and, uh, and it's actually delicious tasting. And I was so happy about that. So that's one way, right. To start having a different relationship with food and being intentional about it and being, being more about feeding yourself well and getting yourself well so that your brain can function properly and not be in deprivation. And the other thing you do, if you want to get stronger as opposed to losing weight and being skinny is you start walking, you go outside, you get that walk in, start with small 20 minutes a day, bump it up. Once you start feeling a little stronger, a little more flexible, a little more active, that's, that's the way to start changing that relationship to your need to be thin and your need to lose weight. Yeah. Esa parte. Ajá. Ok, sorry, I went on a little thing, Cristina, but I had to share my, my ah, thing. Perfecto. Está bien. Ok, dice que después de muchos eventos trágicos, ok, los eventos trágicos tienen que pasar en la vida, pero no por eso también se va a complicar más la vida. El pasado pasó y ahorita a enfocarse en ella misma. Ok, she says in regards to your statement about you've been through tragic events in your life, um, she says tragic events happen to all of us. We all have to bear the burden of tragic things that happen to us. And we don't have to let those tragic things become more tragic things in our life. We have to be okay about saying these things happen to me. They're in my past and they don't define me anymore. Okay. Acá me dice también que uh, no puede prosperar creativamente sin hacerlo. Se me encantan tantas cosas creativas como el arte, el teatro, la difusión. El, espirit el espíritu empresarial, etcétera. Pero encuentro que la reacción que he recibido sobre mi peso me paraliza y no lo intento eh, minimizar mis habilidades y me enojo mucho conmigo misma cuando veo a otros con más sobrepeso realmente prosperando en esta 
área, creo que tengo carisma, pero no voy a mentir, tengo casi 30 años y siento que cuando sea mayor debería colgar, eh, debería colgar creyendo que alguna vez haré algo creativo y seré exitosa. ¿Cómo puedo curar esto? Sé que esta es una pregunta complicada, pero siento una vibra de ustedes y en el momento, bueno, nada es complicado si tú no quieres que sea complicado en este mundo terrenal, de todo hay en la viña del Señor. She says that nothing is complicated enough in this life that you couldn't make uncomplicated just by um, handing a lot of this stuff over to the universe and just making actual tangible changes in your life. Ok, lo que ella tiene que hacer sobre cuestión, el sobrepeso no tiene nada que ver. In sí. regards to your weight, you don't have the issues you think you have. Ella no tiene que, que enfocarse sobre su sobrepeso. She Al says contrario. you do not need to be focusing and obsessing about how overweight you are. A ella si le gusta el arte en su casa, que se ponga a hacer una obra de arte. ¿Quién quite y haciendo una obra? la venda y va a vender más de lo que no se imagina, que ni ella misma sabe en cuánto van a valorar esto. She's inviting you to be artistic in your home. If, if you love art and you love creative things, get creative and do your art. Paint things, make stuff with your hands. Uh, stop judging whether you can or can't do it. Just do it. Start doing it. And you're going to surprise yourself with the people that are actually interested in your things. Por ejemplo, el teatro, ella misma puede en su casa hacer el teatro, drama, o sea, empezar ella misma a practicar. ¿Qué es lo que ella quiere? ¿Qué es lo que ella más desea? Que ella misma empiece a actuar en su casa. ¿Para qué? Para que cuando ella le toque abrirse ese paso, ella lo va a abrir, pero que ya practicó en su casa, ya tiene esa seguridad, ya tiene esa firmeza de que ahora sí, ya voy, no me importa mi físico, mi, 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 mi estado, no importa. ¿Cuántos y tantos? Hay que agradecerle a Dios porque tenemos salud y vida, podemos oler, podemos ver, podemos escuchar. ¿Cuántos y tantos no tienen las capacidades que nosotros tenemos uh -huh. de las manos y tienen más capacidad que nosotros y no están muriendo, se nos están deprimiendo, al contrario, tienen más, más ganas de vivir, más ganas de luchar. Así ella tiene que hacer, o sea, tiene que, que empezar a tener ese espíritu positivo y dejar la amargura, que agarre la amargura, toda esa depresión, que, que la meta viene en una bolsa, bien, 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 le ponga un globito y que lo deje volar. She says that um, you, you have to start empowering yourself and changing your spirit, or the relationship that your spirit has to all of these worries that you've got going on. So, for example, you are, you love theater, she says. Um, you should be working on things in your home, like work on a monologue, work on a script, a scene, whatever. There's so many things that you can be doing at home to prepare yourself for the opportunity of opening a door. But right now you're just in all of the not having, you're in all of the drama and all of the problem, and you're in none of the joy and none of the solutions. And you can be breaking this relationship that you currently have by just becoming more positive about the opportunities that you can make for yourself just by doing things. You don't have to, I say this all the time, you don't have to wait for someone to open the door. You don't have to wait for someone to invite you to the table. Build your table. Build it yourself in your home. I couldn't leave my house to go to acting classes. I had a kid. I was a mom. So what did I do? I watched videos online. I watched other actors online. I started to record myself doing monologues. And then I would watch it back. And I'd say to myself, how, how can I do that better? And then I would do it again. And then I would see it get a little bit better. And then how can I make it even better than that? You have the capability within yourself to do the things that you want to do. But you got to stop thinking like this. You got to interrupt this thinking. You're the only one downplaying yourself. You clearly know it. You know this. On top of it all, you know it. So let it end today. Let it be the last time that you give this, this part of yourself, this ego around your weight, a platform. Take that platform and bullhorn away. You are totally capable of doing whatever you want to do. Tiene que agradecerle mucho a Dios nuestro Señor por todas sus habilidades. 
You have to thank that God. That's yeah. right. You got to thank that's God, the universe, for what you do have and what your abilities are. Habilidades, pero el problema soy yo personalmente que tengo miedo abrirme al universo, abrirme, abrirme abiertamente a lo que yo quiero, miedo por mi sobrepeso. Y yo lo único que yo quiero es perder ese miedo y no importa mi sobrepeso, no importa nada, porque yo voy a lograr todo lo que, el regalo que tú me diste de todas mis habilidades, las quiero gritar a los cuatro vientos, sí. las quiero dar. She's inviting you to have this following conversation with the universe as frequently as possible. Okay, girl, listen up. This is the talk. This is the universe talk that you're going to have. Okay. Yeah. You're going to say to the universe, universe, I am so grateful for the air that you give me to breathe for the body that works. I'm so grateful for all the things, for my creativity, for my entrepreneurship, for all of, I'm so grateful for that. I need your help. I need your help to get out of my own way. I need your help to forgive myself for how negative I've been with me. I need your help to get beyond this weight issue. Help me get beyond this weight issue. I, I don't want to be, I want to be whatever I am in my full skin, in my full curves, in my full look. And I want to be proud of it. I want to be proud of how I, I'm in my skin right now. Help me be proud of it. So you're asking, you're giving gratitude to the universe for the things you have that you know you have are good, girl. You know they're good. And you're going to ask the universe for help with your own point of view on yourself and so that it can start showing you why you're worthy, why it's good, why your curves are great, why you're good where you're at right now. You do this work across the board, you're going to start seeing these changes. But you got to get out of this muck. This muck is not doing nothing good for you, girl. O sea, ella puede y lo va a lograr. Y She que... says, you can, you can do this, and you will do this. Y nos va a hablar, por favor, para que nos diga, ya soy alguien importante en este mundo terrenal. And she says that you're going to come back to us. And you're going to tell Christina, you know what? Not only did I do it, but I'm somebody important now. I'm important in the way that I wanted to be important. And you're going to be in a really good space about that. No so sé, go get you. No sé por qué le voy a decir, pero eso sí le puedo decir que en un año y medio, ni ella misma va a recordar este momento por tanto, tanto que va a recibir. She says that any, she says she doesn't know why she's saying this, but she's giving this to you because it's what has come to her in a year and a half. You're not even going to remember this. You're not even going to remember this whole time in your life when you were in the lacking, when you were in the negative about yourself, because what's coming to you, girl, is so big. It's so big. What's coming to you that you're going to forget all about these other things. So that is what's ahead of you. And just like the reader before, the question that we got before, now it's up to you to do the work that you need to do to open up this path for yourself. And that's in your conversation with the universe. Así es. Okay. I hope you received that well, friend. I'm sorry si fuimos un poquito duros, pero... She says we're... Sorry. I'm sorry, too, if we were a little harsh. Hopefully you didn't receive that harshly. Y que no me conoce enojada. <laughs> and don't be mad. But you know what? I get so frustrated about, about this. I, I, I talked to a young lady once that, um, okay, I talked to a young lady once. Um, I'll tell you this really quick story, really quick, okay? I was on the, the set for Empire. And um, I had just had a baby and I was in Spanx. Okay. I was like <laughs> trying to get in that empire look. <laughs> right. And I had a, a, a really cool background artist stop me and the two other women that I were with, that I was with. And those women were curvy women as well. Gorgeous, beautiful, curvy women. Yeah. And she, this background artist was um, curvy herself. And she said, oh, I just, I really want to do what you guys do. And I'm really trying to work at it. And she was 
around our age, maybe a little bit, a little bit older, but in the zone, right? Ain't nobody spring chicken over here in this conversation. And I said, oh, cool. And she goes, but I'm waiting to get my headshots until I lose some weight. Okay. <laughs> Let me tell you why that don't work. Okay. Because while you're waiting, while you're waiting to get your headshots, those headshots that are your calling card for your acting career, those headshots that casting directors pick in order to call you into the room so you can manifest the thing that you're looking to manifest in your career. Other girls that are curvy, like me, like the two women that I was with that were on the show, they're going out there and they're getting the experience of auditioning, of getting in front of the camera, of learning how to work on a set. They're actually doing the thing. So by the time that you find yourself to be skinny enough to get your headshots, guess what you don't have? Experience. Mm -hmm. You don't have the experience because you were waiting to look a certain way. So now I got 10 years on you because I didn't care whether I fit into my jeans or not. I just went and bought a b bigger pair of jeans and I went out into the audition and I gave it all I had. And eventually something opened for me because I knew that I was worth it. So know that you're worth it. Don't wait for yourself to be in the kind of look and the skin that you want to be in. Start manifesting the thing today. Okay. All right. Let's move on to the next question. Um, Okay. Will I return to Los Angeles by August, 2021? I am home with family. Career is blossoming. I want to return to LA to pursue my acting career. I'm doing the work, grateful, giving gratitude. Thank you. So the question is, will I return to LA by August, 2021? I'm home with family career. I'm home with family and career is blossoming. Ok, volveré a Los Ángeles en agosto del 2021. Estoy en casa con mi familia. La carrera está floreciendo. Quiero volver a Los Ángeles para seguir mi carrera como actor. Estoy haciendo el trabajo agradeciendo, agradecido, dando gratitud. Gracias. Ok, mm, acá no le, no le entiendo bien la pregunta. ¿Está preguntando si va a regresar para, el, para agosto? Sí, está preguntando si va a regresar a Los Ángeles en agosto 2021, uh, porque ahora está en su casa con su familia. Me imagino que no está en Los Ángeles. Ya no, no, no está en Los Ángeles, pero y, la, me confundí un poquito. Y, y quiere saber si va a um, hacer su carrera, hacer su carrera de actuación en ah. Los Ángeles. Pero sí. ella tiene una carrera que está ab abriéndose donde está. Uh -huh. Ya, yeah. acá me dice que en Los Ángeles no creo que llegue en agosto, no creo que vaya para agosto, hay probabilidad que sea en septiembre. Uh -huh. Y uh, me dice que sí va, va, va a venir muchas cosas muy, muy buenas. No sé, ojalá y no me equivoque, pero acá yo veo que él va a tener un contrato más o menos como por febrero del próximo año, pero parece ser que es como uh, para una película. Sí. Uh, okay, so she says that she does not see you returning to LA in August, but she does see you going in September. She sees a probability of you going in September and that you will have, uh, your career is indeed opening up quite well. And she sees you, ¿cuándo va a ser la película? En febrero del próximo año hay un contrato para él. And come February of next year, she sees uh, a contract being offered for, mm -hmm. for an acting job. Y tiene que, um, tiene que actualizarse otro poquito más porque sí como que le hace falta un poquito más de seguridad en, en él, este, un poquito más de seguridad, más firmeza, más confianza en él mismo y mm -hmm. también necesita como que actualizarse un poquito más en, no sé, como que ir a... Como que él solito en su casa actúe como que eh, si es una, una, este, una novela o una película, lo que sea, pero que si trate de, de actualizarse un poquito más y cuando vaya a, a hacer casting o lo que sea, que baje un poquito su ego y que vaya con seguridad. O sea, como que el universo le dé esa, esa seguridad, esa firmeza, pero que el ego lo baje. O sea, que sea una persona humilde, 
Mm -hmm. La humildad lo va a ayudar a brillar más. So there's a couple of things that you're receiving here, friend. The first is um, she sees your career doing well, right? She sees this thing coming up in February for you of next year. That's going to be a, a, a big offer. But there's some things you got to work on in order to make those things happen for you. The first is in um, in coming into yourself. So there's a couple of things in regards to that. First, she sees that you have you can be really insecure sometimes. Mm -hmm. And um, that you don't have enough belief in yourself. So you have to have more confidence in, in what you can bring to the table, right? So maybe it's more about like taking the insecurity part of it out because you are, you are good at what you do. That being said, she says that she sees you walking into castings really inflated in your ego. And you have some humbling. You got to bring yourself down a little bit. I mean, it's good for you to be like in communion and be like assured of yourself, but it's another thing to let your ego take over and walk into spaces like you're the last Coke in the desert. Like that's not going to work for you either. Humble is better. Come at it for the right reasons. Come at it to do the work well. Come at it to be excellent in what you're doing, but don't come at it with ego like you're the best thing that's happened in the room because that's not going to serve you well. She says you also have a little bit of work left to do in your genre acting. She says you need to learn how to um, switch your acting style for to fit different genres. That you're a good actor, but it doesn't start and stop with being a good actor when it comes to television and film. You have to know the nuance between acting for like, let's say, a procedural show and then acting for like something on HBO that requires a different kind of acting skill set, and you're still kind of lacking in that department. But it's not work that you can't do on your own. You can be at home and, you know, just grab a monologue from these different shows and um, watch the shows and then try and match the acting tone, the acting style to the monologue, to the show. If that, if that makes sense, I hope that makes sense to you. But um, you want to learn to finesse how you bring that acting genre to the table because it's going to help you get the work that you're looking to get. You have to be able to be versatile in that way. So you have a little bit of work left to do there in order to get the big stuff that you're looking for. Okay. Y está, uh, está haciendo el trabajo de agradecimiento y dando gratitud. Eso está perfecto. Eso le va a ayudar mucho. Y así uh, le, le diría que eh, agarrara unos chocolates o dulces. Ok, unos dulces, los dulces que más le gusten, que los agarre y uh, se vaya un, se vaya, cuando se vaya a correr, que agarre los dulces y um, le pida al universo lo que él más desea y luego que se limpie así nada más con, las, con los dulces así, un poquito de su cara en su corazón y que le diga al universo que esto le da de ofrenda para que él pueda su deseo concretarse y lo va a aventar hacia arriba y se va. Ok, I might ask you again to go over that. So, um, she says, she, she sees that you run, that you're a runner. So, when you go out to do your running, she wants you to take your favorite candy or chocolates whatever your favorite kind is. Oh, it has to be chocolate? Este, uh, dulces, dulces, dulces. Oh, it, it has to be candy. I'm sorry. It has to be candy. So get your favorite candy and then um, t put it in a bag and take it uh, with you running and then go to a park. And then um, at that park, she wants you to... ¿Qué es que, qué es que quieres que él haga? Que pida al universo. She wants you to ask the universe. Yo creo que más quiere, en este caso, que le llegue una propuesta buena como actor. She wants you to ask the... Wait, despacito, despacito. She wants you to uh, ask the universe and, and um, decree to the universe to bring you the the job, the acting job that you really want, that you're really seeking. Que le traiga, que le abra más las puertas. To open your doors more, that, ask actor. the universe to, to open the doors more for you. De actor. As an actor. Para que pueda brillar. So that you can shine. En todo lo que él quiera. 
in everything that you want to shine in, todo lo que él desee, in everything that you desire, y que así se haga. Y va a hacer esto con los dulces, así va a agarrar los dulces y se persigne o que haga una oración. And then you're going to take the and and for and and for for it to be concrete. That's what you're going to ask the universe. And then you're going to take the bag of candies mm -hmm. and you're going to rub them around yourself the way that she's saying and then offer a prayer. So, mm -hmm. enséñale cómo tiene que ponerlo. Sí. So, she's showing you how you would put that candy around your body and around your, your physical self. Y después que le diga al universo, gracias, querido universo, que los aviente hacia arriba. And then you're going to throw them up in the air while saying thank you to the universe. Y después ya que se vaya. And then you're going to leave that park. Now, I know okay. what you're probably asking yourself is, am, esto, am, am I going to litter these candies in the park? Yes, you are. Es un agradecimiento park. al universo por lo que él está pidiendo. And that is a, a gratitude to the universe, like a, an offering to the universe for what you're asking it to do for you. Exacto. Pero los dulces que más le gusten. You have to get sí. the candy that you love the most so not that you know low grade candy <laughs> that you don't <laughs> like get the candy your favorite candy yeah uh, and get a lot of it and then um do make these steps and offer that to the universe with that prayer and if you're like freaking out that you didn't write that down just now don't stress out this video saves on twitch chicago for real twitch.tv slash Chicago for real. And you can rewatch that, um, this episode and get what you need out of it and get this whole prayer that you need. So you can write it down. Okay. Después de eso, ya cuando le den el trabajo que él quiere, que le compre un buen vino a nuestra madre tierra y que vaya y se la echa así a la madre de tierra y que le diga gracias, querido universo, por darme lo que tanto Pity. So then after you get this gig that's coming to you, once you do all this work and be intentional about making these changes with, with, uh, with the stuff you need to change, when this work comes to you, she wants you to buy a really high-end bottle of wine, something real nice, not the box of wine. I'm talking about a nice bottle of wine where you're spending, you know, it's spendy. 60, 80, 90, 100, 150 dollar bottle of wine. Really think about it like you're buying a fine wine to be grateful to the universe with and to give it to um, Mother Earth, who is on your side and has helped to open these paths for you. And you're going to pour it onto the earth completely. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be, you're going to have and say gratitude for it giving you the things that you were seeking. Okay. Good luck, friend. Break a leg. Yeah. I hope it comes for you, all of it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Next question. Um, all right. Next question. I wonder if I am on the right career path. It feels like that, but maybe I am going about it the wrong way. Okay. Uh, si esta la trayectoria profesional está correcta, pero es, trata de amar, amar tu carrera, ámala, lo hemos repetido, eso es lo que el universo quiere, que, que amemos lo que queremos hacer, que lo amemos como si fuera parte de nosotros, ¿qué pasa? La carrera es la que nos da casa, vestido y sustento, nos da todo, ¿sí? Entonces hay que agradecerlo y entre más agradezcamos por el trabajo, por la carrera, por la casa, uh, por todo lo que tenemos más nos va a venir, más va a ser más ligero nuestro camino. Yo les digo, entre más agradecidos seamos, menos pesados se nos va a hacer eh, nuestras actividades, nuestra carrera, menos va a ser este, difícil el, el ser mamá. O el, a veces tenemos tantas cosas y por obra y gracia del Espíritu Santo se nos va todo lo negativo y lo hacemos con amor. Entonces, entre más hagamos las cosas con amor, con amor nos va a llegar todo lo que nosotros deseamos. 
So um, your response, friend, is very similar to some of the responses that we've given. And I mean, you'll find that this is actually stuff that people struggle struggle in common with. Um, so you are on the right career path. Um, you're in the right place. Um, but you, she's inviting you again to have more gratitude about being in that space and place and have more assurance in yourself that you are on the right path. And so it's, um, it's having that gratitude conversation and saying, thank you for giving me this job. Thank you for giving me this career. Thank you for, you know, having this career provide me food, provide me roof over my head, provide me clothing on my body, um, providing me security, gratitude, 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 gratitude. You have to bring gratitude to the table because that gratitude is going to bring your whole heart to the table of your career with you. And when you are in your whole heart inside of your chosen profession, then mm -hmm. things start to open. But mm -hmm. if we're not in our whole heart uh, and in our whole self, then things mm -hmm. get stuck in the muck of our wishy-washiness, of our insecurity, of our not knowing. Mm -hmm. So Again, the fastest way out of the muck, the fastest way out of the ego is gratitude. Gratitude for what you do have and gratitude that you're in the right place for yourself. So, um, de manera correcta. Sí está bien. yeah, she says that you are definitely in the right career path. You're doing it right. So now it's just about. Y le viene una sorpresa. And she says that a surprise is on its way for you. Una sorpresa buena. Eh, y no puedes decir que es, no. No puedo, pero. Ah, I just asked if we can know what the surprise pero, was. She said no. <laughs> algo que está esperando desde hace muchísimo tiempo. But she says that the surprise is something that you've been waiting for for quite a long time. Ooh, what is it? Ooh, you're going to have to wait and see. That's exciting. Cuando le llegue, que nos diga, sí, llegó. She says, come back and tell us that it came when it comes. Positivamente. Yay, that's so cool. Hi, Ashlyn. I'm glad you made it. I'm glad you made it. Um, so... That uh, that's all the questions that we've received so far for today. Um, Y'all had some really good stuff. I'm like, <gasps> I'm feeling all of you. Um, uh, I hope that you received this well from Cristina. I hope that you had some questions answered. I hope you're feeling kind of vibed in to what's going on here <laughs> um, and that you are um, eagerly looking forward to creating that connection with the universe that you're seeking. Um, I would like to invite you. This is a, this is an exchange of energy that's going on in this room. So if you felt and received your messaging well today, um, and you feel so extra about it that you would like to offer something in return, um, you can tip Christina to Zell. Um, by sending it uh, through Zell to universe talks eight at gmail.com. Really, whatever is in your heart that you want to give, no amount is too small. Um, this is uh, this is a way that Christina makes her living. And so um, even though she comes here to offer you these things for free, and if you are in a place where you just don't have that kind of uh, change to spare, um, then I don't want you to feel obliged. But if you felt really good about what you received today and you feel like you got some clarity on something that you've been chewing on for quite some time, then I would like to invite you um, to send a tip uh, and offering in return to Christina. Um, also, if you receive some stuff that you want to dig a little bit, um, uh, gracias Christina, dice, I am true joy. You're so welcome. She does it from the heart. From the heart. Um, uh, she's so happy to help. It really, uh, she always talks about the adrenaline that she gets from helping y'all uh, and how good that feels for her too. So um, I'm glad that you guys are receiving it well. Um, if you wanted to dive in a little deeper, um, Christina does have a menu available of like a la carte items that she offers from uh, tarot readings to coffee readings. If you have pain in your body and you've been to the doctor and it just hasn't been accessed and you are looking for any other kind of alternative that might help, Christina also does spiritual healing. Um, and um, 
she does that out of her home. So if you're in Chicago, you would be able to ask for those services. The card readings and uh, coffee readings and things, we can do, um, it can be done via Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, so you can be anywhere and um, ask for that service. Um, the way to do that is by getting in contact with universe talks eight at gmail.com and say, Hey, uh, I'm looking for a menu of services. Can you send me something? And then we will go ahead and send you that menu. And then you respond with what you're looking for dates and times of availability that you're seeking. And then we'll get that all worked out for you. Christina also, as you know, only speaks Spanish. So if you need translation help, please include that in the email and we'll find a way to, um, get that going for you guys also, um, unless you speak Spanish and then you don't need any translation help and you're all good. Um, so that is, uh, that's the show for today. Cristina, ¿hay algo más que quieres decir antes que nos vayamos? Pues muchas bendiciones, que todos sus deseos se les concreten, que pidan por todo el universo, por los amigos, por los enemigos y por todo el mundo entero, no nada más pidamos por nosotros, que pidamos por los que no tienen que comer, porque pues que haya un alma caritativa y que les dé, y que pues eh, que su familia todos estén bien y que todos sus deseos de verdad se les concreten. She is uh, wishing you a ton of uh, blessings and um, and positive vibes. Um, she's sending that your way. She wants all of these things that you're seeking to come to you. Um, she also wants to invite you guys to um, um, be grateful to the universe um, and to ask for blessings for not only for, your, for yourself, but for the people that you love and for the people around you and for the people that you don't like so much uh, and the people that are causing you problems. Find a way to find gratitude and blessings for those people as well. Um, because the more you operate out of that place of love and gratitude, the less conflict that you're going to find in your life. It's just the way that kind of stuff works. Y no se les olvide darle gracias al universo cuando se vayan a dormir por el día bueno, malo, como haya sido, pero hay que ser agradecidos por todo lo que nos da el universo. Y and, en la mañana, perdón. And she says, don't forget at night to um, be great, to offer your gratitude to the universe for the, for the day that it has given you. Um, it is really, really important to be in gratitude to the universe for the things that you have. Y en la mañana también agradecerle por darnos otro día más de vida y que ese día, que el día y todos los días en, estén llenos de luz, de paz, de tranquilidad, de serenidad y también que todos sus deseos se concreten en cada paso que den. And then in the morning, um, give gratitude to the universe for waking up that day and, um, and ask the universe to manifest the things that you're looking to have manifested and, um, and ask for blessings for from the universe as well. My favorite thing to do is while I'm in the car, <laughs> I'm driving and I say, ah, universe, I'm so grateful to you. Show yourself to me in a way that is undeniable. I wanna see you and feel you today. Um, I wanna I wanna be in love. I wanna be in the state of joy. Um, show, show me, show me you today so that I know it's you undeniably. And the universe talks. So it's, uh, it's nice. Put, I'm just putting it out there. Um, Esperamos el día domingo. Uh, tenemos una preguntita bien rápida. Uh -huh. ¿Qué, what do you do? We have a quick question. What do you do when you don't feel you have any gratitude left to give? ¿Qué hacemos cuando nos sentimos que no tenemos gratitud um, ya en nuestro cuerpo para dar más? Um, simplemente... Dejarnos que nazca y que crezca ese sentimiento, ¿sí? Nosotros no nos podemos, a nosotros mismos no nos podemos forzar algo que no sentimos, ¿sí? Nosotros tenemos que dejarnos y en el momento menos esperado, porque vamos a agradecer cuando nos llegue lo que deseamos. Uh -huh. Ahorita mientras muchos están peleados con el universo, que no me das, que nos pero que se calmen. Ya después los veremos que cada rato va a estar gracias, querido universo, gracias, querido universo. Sí. O sea, hay que esperar y no desesperar. A nadie los podemos presionar. 
nadie, ni el zapato apretado lo podemos meter, ¿sí? Entonces, simplemente que deje y que se deje llevar. She says, um, don't despair and have patience. Um, patience over impatience. Patience over desperation. If you don't feel that you have gratitude left to give right now, um, then leave it alone. It's not the time for you to experience gratitude in this moment. Um, she, she says, when you let that go, when you let the worry of not having gratitude to give go, then the universe will present itself to you in a way that will remind you that there is gratitude to be had. But we, you have to just let that go and give it up and uh, allow yourself to just walk through the way that you need to walk through right now. Um, but it will come. And when it comes, it will be undeniably so. And you will say, thank you. And you will feel gratitude again. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. Los esperamos el día domingo. All right. So we will be back on Sunday at 10 o'clock in the morning. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Uh, we'll be back on Sunday at 10 in the morning. Si tiene su pregunta, para que hacemos su respuesta. Yeah. So she's inviting you guys. If there's stuff that you want to know about, like if you have a certain theme you'd like us to explore, we've, we've uh, talked about reincarnation. Uh, today we talked about um, some of the relationship around spiritual paths and trying to access people that uh, present themselves um, in a, in a space of divinity and to be careful with who you choose to walk that spiritual path with um, because not everybody has had the kind of experience that they need um, in order to guide you. So be, be mindful of those things, but there's so many different themes that we can talk about um, and they are open to you. You can dictate where we go with these conversations. So if you have something that you would like for us to chew on together on Sunday, feel free to email universe talks eight at gmail.com. And, uh, we will, you know, Christina, I, I don't, I just translate. <laughs> I don't do anything <laughs> other than translate. Um, <laughs> Christina will put together programming for you that day that will speak more along the themes that you would like to know more of. Um, and if you have any questions, you can also send them to universe talks eight at gmail.com. Um, come Sunday for that 10 o'clock session, we go from 10 to 1130 ish and we answer questions again at that session. All right. Oh. Okay. That's the show. Gracias, Cristina. Bendiciones. Muchas gracias. She wants you all to have a good night and she sends you a ton of blessings. Um, I hope you all received today's show well and you received your message as well. And if you feel like giving to please give and do this uh, episode will be available on uh, twitch.tv slash Chicago for real for your enjoyment. And uh, we'll see you back here again. Come, uh, come Sunday at 10 o'clock. Bye. Bye. Bye.